Starting out life in the arcades way back in 1986, OutRun has become synonymous with the term arcade racer and has managed to influence nearly every racing game in some way since. OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast is essentially a reimagining of that first title in the series and brings with it many changes, the first obviously being the visuals that to this day still impress. It truly is night and day when compared to the original release, with the power of the PlayStation 2 really coming into its own to produce impressive environments as well as the several vehicles that make the cut. The entire experience is sectioned into different modes, including a pretty robust campaign that will see you racing rivals and trying to please your passenger as much as possible with your skills. At the beginning not that much is available to the player, only some basic cars and challenges in which to take on, but through the use of outrun miles, which can be earned by participating in the several modes on offer, it is possible to unlock further cars, challenges, tracks and even background music. If you're a fan of arcade races, Outrun 2006 coast to coast is bound to put a smile on your face and well and truly deserves a spot in your collection as well. As the name implies, Motorstorm Arctic Edge moves away from the usual desert and lush environments of the previous iterations, and instead opts for the somewhat harsh and unforgiven landscapes of the Arctic. Released in tandem with the PlayStation Portable version, fans of the series will instantly know what to expect. A pretty robust and well thought out career mode that deals out points in which to unlock further vehicles, challenges and customization items is the main draw of the overall experience, but the real star of the show is the minute to minute gameplay that will quite literally leave you on the edge of your seat. Whichever vehicle you may find yourself in, may that be a snowmobile, motorbike or even a truck, they all come with their own distinct advantages and disadvantages that makes navigating them around each track all the more trickier but at the same time rewarding once you've mastered the more intricate nature of each machine. The level of difficulty you'll be encountering is also worth taking note of and manages to provide a real challenge whilst making it through everything the game has to offer. Overall if you're looking for a fun pick up and play racer on the system, Motorstorm Arctic Edge offers up a great option. Crash Tag Team Racing is more of a combat racing game with minor platforming elements that manage to all come together and create something truly exceptional. It all takes place in Motor World, which players are introduced to at the start of the game and tasks them with taking on several challenges such as normal races to events such as Crashinator. There's a whole host of activities in which to undertake, which makes Crash Tag Team Racing one hell of a game. Over the course of the campaign you'll find yourself unlocking more characters in which to use on the track, as well as new modes and minigames that immensely add to the overall replay value of the game. The main hook of the experience though has to be the clash feature, which sees the player clashing with an opponent during a race in order to merge with their vehicle and take control of a turret, which can then be used to take out opponents or prevent incoming attacks. It's a pretty neat system that although never quite reaching the party antics of the Mario Kart series, still packs quite the punch when it comes to providing a slice of racing mayhem on the PlayStation 2. Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift 2 can at first come across as a budget game with not that much to offer, but the more you play it soon becomes apparent that there is a lot more to it than what first meets the eye. The first aspect that will strike many is the way in which each track is actually lifted from real life locations in a tremendously detailed way, may that be the quiet back streets of Tokyo with cherry blossoms littering the floor, to the more urban highways that dominate the city. Everything all feels authentic and does nothing but help elevate the overall experience. As with most races, in games you'll find yourself acquiring a wide range of vehicles as well as several ways in which to upgrade each through the use of new parts or cosmetic changes to help make your mark. For many people though, Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift 2 will at first be quite daunting, mainly due to the large learning curve that is thrown at the player. It can be quite frustrating trying to get used to the way in which each car handles, but after some time and patience with the game it all soon becomes second nature. Now it won't be for everyone, but for those that take their time and get used to the more intricate aspects of the game, Drift 2 will will provide one of the most rewarding races on the system. As many of you will already know, I'm a huge fan of the Ridge Racer series, and although it's not the most realistic of racers out there, Ridge Racer 5 manages to provide what the series has always gotten right, that arcade feeling at home. Coming off the heels of the incredible Ridge Racer Type 4 on the PlayStation 1, the fifth iteration in the series began life as a launch title for the PlayStation 2, and although some might say the game is incredibly easy when compared to the more serious racers out there such as Gran Turismo, it is extremely enjoyable to play, that feeling of drifting around corners 
is at breakneck speeds as the announcer cheers you on in the most cheesiest of ways never gets old. And with the amount of content and unlockables in which to earn, there's also plenty in which to do. Although not as finely thought out and presented as Rage Racer or Type 4, Ridge Racer 5 still offers up an incredibly enjoyable experience for both veterans of the series and newcomers alike. So if you're looking for the perfect pick up and play racer on the PS2, look no further than this one. Auto Modelista is quite a unique racer, which manages to mix the simulation aspects of Gran Turismo with the more arcadey nature of the Ridge Racer series. The main attraction of the experience has to be the Garage Life Mode, which tasks the player to start from the bottom and earn credits whilst racing in order to acquire faster machines, tuning parts or cosmetic changes such as body kits to increase the chances of emerging victorious on the track. It's a highly addictive mode and is bound to last players many hours as they hone in on their dream machine. One aspect that will instantly stand out to most people is the way in which Auto Modelista presents itself. Instead of pushing for realistic visuals, it renders everything in a cell shaded manner that results in a truly unique style the game can call its own. Each location, vehicle, and even weather effect all look spectacular as you race to be number one. As I mentioned earlier, Auto Modelista shares many similarities with arcade racers, and the biggest department in which it does has to be the handling of each vehicle. It probably won't satisfy the more serious of sim players, but it still well and truly deserves a look for any racing fan. The third iteration in the Midnight Club series manages to build upon everything and as a result it's a far more superior experience that is more than likely to satisfy even the most pickiest of racing fans. The first thing many will notice is the incredible sense of speed which the game offers. The action is really fast and with over 50 vehicles in which to utilise, there are many options open to the player when it comes to hitting the road. As you would expect, you can alter each vehicle's performance and appearance that deliver noticeable differences whilst racing or evading the cops. The possibility are literally endless with the amount of options at your disposal. Complementing all of this is the sheer amount of things to do. From quick dashes across the city to full-blown tournaments, the game is constantly throwing new things your way in which to try out and overcome. If you're a fan of street racing, Midnight Club will be right up your street. So if you're looking for something different to get stuck into, this one well and truly deserves a place in your collection as well. The Burnout series has always approached the concept of racing in an entirely unique way. Instead of just simply focusing upon being the first across the finishing line, many other aspects also come into play whilst out on the track. The main one being to cause complete and utter chaos through the risk first reward system that is permeated throughout the entire series. By driving into oncoming traffic, pulling off drifts, or performing death defying stunts, a gauge known as the Burnout Meter will gradually fill up and unleash bursts of incredible speed upon using it. Tying into this is a new mechanic known as the aggressive system and rewards players with even more points to build their meter by causing their opponents to take a dive or completely taking them out of the race. It all adds up to an enjoyable experience that will keep you on the edge of your seat as you take turns at 200 miles per hour and weave in and out of danger. With the amount of modes and content included with the package, Burnout Free Takedown offers up one of the most entertaining races on the system. The bleeding fast racing and tight controls work together in harmony to create something that is truly unforgettable and worthy of a place in your collection. After the huge success of the first game in the Underground series, it wasn't long until the second iteration made an appearance. As you would expect, this brought with it several upgrades and new ideas that go a long way in making the second in the series one of the greatest racing games on the system. The biggest change had to be the new free roaming mode that allows players to explore the city in their own time and take on new challenges and races without ever having to leave the world. It was an innovative way of presenting the experience and really kept you immersed within the world. Couple this with the impressive amount of modes that locations, vehicles and ways in which you can customise them and you have one of the most addictive racers that really knows how to reward its players. Although not the most realistic of racing games, when it comes to serious racing and is bound to satisfy both fans of the genre as well as newcomers alike.
Gran Turismo 4 quite simply is the finest racing game on the PlayStation 2, even a contender for best of all time in my opinion. The clear level of passion and craftsmanship that has gone into the experience is immediately evident, from the wide array of modes to the impressive amount of vehicles in which to use. There is plenty on offer here that will satisfy every racing fan. As with most games in the series, the main draw for many will be the simulation mode, which sees you starting out with a small amount of funds in which to purchase a cheap vehicle and start your racing journey. Over the course of it, you'll find yourself purchasing a whole host of vehicles, tune-up parts, and earning licenses that allow you to take on more of what the game has to offer. Visually, Gran Turismo 4 is the gold standard when it comes to racing games on the PlayStation 2. It is truly impressive what they managed to squeeze out of the machine, with each location, track, and vehicle all coming to life in a way not found in many other races on the console. If you're a serious racing fan, Gran Turismo 4 on the PS2 is a no-brainer, and will likely provide you with hours upon hours of entertainment. So if you're looking for a racer on the system, look no further than Gran Turismo 4.